Hi guys, welcome back to the Network Tutorial Part 2. Uh, in the previous video, we learned about the basic terminologies and gathered some requirements and learned how to do some basic planning. But before you get on with the video, here's a message from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Home Trust, Singapore's leading interior design portal. Looking for an interior designer for your home? Fret not. Home Trust allows you to find unbiased reviews and design ideas from the best interior designers in Singapore. Simply select your house type, budget, and design style, and you will find tons of ideas that will fit your criteria. You can easily browse pictures of completed projects and read customer reviews on the different ideas before making your big decision. Head on over to HomeTrust.sg or click the link in the description box below to find out more. Now back to the video. Once you have finished gathering the requirements, you can start to plan what devices to get for the house to fit your plan. In the next section, um, we are going to use some basic sample requirements to simulate real-world considerations when we are kind of planning for the network. So this is just basically a backstory, a very simple backstory of an average new-ish family planning for the house network. So the first requirement is that the family wants to watch videos and watch movies on streaming services in the living room TV and don't want it to lag or have buffering issues. They also like to have friends over and hang out in the living room. Uh, one look from this, you can see that there's a lot of kind of uh, internet activity in the living room. And then the second requirement is that the owner wants to have a study slash office area in bedroom too. And the other requirement is that the owners are also PC gamers and they want to have LAN connection to two of their PCs in the room so that their internet connection will be strong and stable. So keeping that in mind, um, let's move ahead with what we can do with this. So for the most basic setup, right, there's, I guess, three different possibilities that most people can start out with for people who are new to networking. Uh, and I feel that this is, um, I guess, easy enough. Okay, let's start with the most basic one and what a huge portion of people will be going for if they haven't planned, which is a single router. So when you sign up for different plans with the ISP, what they're going to give you is a single router. So the router that most ISP gives you without any top up or any like specific extra bundles, right? It's most likely going to be one of the most basic models. I mean, it's not the higher tier routers, so it's just very basic. For a two to three room flat with Wi-Fi only and no smart home, this kind of device is probably enough, but for four of to five room flats, you would probably more than likely have issues getting a stable connection in different parts of the house if you're going to use the most basic router. And you're much better off buying a better router if you're going to have just one device, right? Another consideration is that this particular single router has to be in the most centralized location of the house, which in, in our case is most likely to be in the living room or placed in one of the central bedrooms. This one router is probably going to lack LAN abilities or physical connections if you put the router in the living room so the, the PCs in your other rooms won't get LAN connection and then vice versa like if you put in your bedroom then your your the other rooms won't get LAN connection so using our floor plan as an example um, if you're going to put the basic wireless router in the living room you're definitely going to have very bad signal in the main bedroom um, let's not even talk about the main bedroom toilet where some people I know they like to scroll the social media in while doing their business in the toilet. Um, you're definitely not going to have that uh, if you put it the most basic router in your living room. So the best placement for this router should be somewhere in the center of the house and it will most likely not fit in most renovation layouts. So if you just try to find the center point in the house, it's near or like just outside bedroom too and like in the middle of nowhere so it's going to be very ugly so in addition to that if you're going to have just one router and it's the most basic one one of the more common placements is that oh this this router is ugly let me put it in the db box itself let me tell you this is going to guarantee one of the worst possible network cell in the house so if you put the router in the db box and then you're going to be one of, in one of the bedrooms the signal will be blocked by the door of the bedroom, the walls around the house, and then the DB box doors, and we'll have multiple layers before the actual device receives the Wi-Fi signal. The signal will deteriorate accordingly with more and more layers of wall and doors between the device and the router. 
So this so setup is ultimately not ideal because the PCs in the study will not be physically connected, that, which means they, are, they have to use Wi-Fi. They, they cannot use LAN connection. And depending on where you put it, if you want the two PCs to have LAN connection, right, you put the router in the study, the TV and the game consoles in the living room will probably have bad Wi-Fi. It's not good for either your guests, your TV movie experience or your gaming experience. So if you want to do this, I would suggest just buying a better router as compared to the, the one that the ISP gives you for free and then put it, I guess, in the room if you want LAN connection to your room. And that should probably kind of be central enough to sort of like give internet connection to the house. Um, your TV may not have the best connection, but well, we will have to make do with it if this is what you're going to go for. The other option is more robust and quite a number of people are using it, which is to have a setup with two wireless access points. Wireless access points or wireless AP are devices that are connected physically via LAN cables and can be standalone. Their jo only job is to take in the internet traffic and provide Wi-Fi. What most people have for this setup is a second router repurposed as a wireless AP. This is likely to happen when people who went for the single router option in originally can buy a better router at a later date and just repurpose the basic router given by the ISP into a wireless access point in another room. This setup has good Wi-Fi coverage as now, instead of having only one centralized Wi-Fi location, you can have multiple Wi-Fi locations around the house. However, this is not recommended for people who don't want to spend some time configuring the router and to play around with the settings and may get a bit costly because of the router prices. So back to our example, we have two routers to play with now. What we can do is to put one router in bedroom 2. This provides Wi-Fi to the study and main bedroom area and also has enough LAN ports to cater for the two PCs. So unfortunately, yeah, in, in this case, we are strictly going with two routers only. Then the other one will have to be in a DB box. Because of what the HDB gives us, right, the D1 to D6, the router in the DB box will have to be connected to, uh, let's say D4 is the one that's connected to study. The router will have to connect to D4 and then from the study, extend out to the, get connected to the other router. So this router will provide the Wi-Fi to the living room area and be connected to D4 or whatever the port is in the study using Ethernet cable and the Ethernet port in the router. So basically what happens in the DB box is your ONT, your modem, connects to one of the routers, hopefully the better router, and then this particular router in the DB box will connect to D4 and then in the study, the D4 port extends out to the other router acting as an access point. The router in the study will in turn be connected to the default port and receive the signal from the router in the DB box. Okay, so however, in this case, even though the study room situation is resolved, two PCs have uh, the whole LAN situation settled and also they have the wireless access point settled, they should be fine, right? However, uh, the TV and game consoles in the living room will have to use Wi Fi connection. And even though it works, uh, the TV will get I would say relatively strong internet connection even though it's the, the router is in the DB box, right? It's not what we want because ideally we want like we want the best internet connection for the game consoles and the TV, right? So what we can do is to get something known as a network switch. Essentially what it is, it's just a power extension bar but instead of splitting the electrical points, it's splitting the internet ports. And these are relatively inexpensive to buy. We can use this to split the LAN connection and have one connection for the TV and one more for the game console. So what you can do is connect the DB box router to the D1 port, extend out to the network switch. Then from the network switch, you have an ethernet cable to the TV and another ethernet cable from the network switch to the game console. So what this does is allows the TV and the the game console to have LAN connection, the studies situation will be handled as well, all with LAN connection. Unfortunately, this requires the most configuration and ideally for people who are just starting out, there's, a, there's some learning curve to it. 
Okay, the next option which is fast gaining popularity in the whole HDB networking setup and the new buzzword for different ISP is to have a mesh Wi-Fi network setup. So this is what I, I think most ISPs are trying to push. So what this means is basically having a single main mesh node in, for example, the DB box and two to three nodes around the house where you require Wi-Fi. Mesh Wi-Fi is one of the easiest to set up and it's the most hassle-free solution, in my opinion, for most people. This setup, however, may cost as much as the previous setup, but it may arguably have the best Wi-Fi coverage around the house. So it will be great for people who work around the house on a laptop or use wireless devices for the majority of the time. However, most of the mesh routers and nodes have limited LAN capabilities as they only have maybe two or three internet ports per node. So you may want to take that into consideration. The next thing to note is about wired or wireless backhaul for mesh, which I'm just going to touch on briefly as it will take too long to explain fully. But you have to consider how the different mesh nodes connect to each other. Wired using ethernet or wirelessly using another 5 GHz frequency band. So instead of the usual 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz wireless bands, they have one more 5 GHz band total to each other. The best is to opt for wired backhaul if possible. So maybe one node in the DB box and connected to the other node in the bedroom via Ethernet cable. If you opt for wireless backhaul, it's best if the devices do not have walls or anything blocking them and they can't be too far away as it will affect data transmission. Do note the backhaul is just for mesh but it's still applicable for wireless signal in general. So in the above scenario that we have gone through so far, I'm going to use a typical mesh router with two Ethernet ports per node connected via Ethernet backhaul. So what? So setup is pretty straightforward. The first node, I'm going to put it in the DB box connected to the modem using one Ethernet port. Keep this in mind. It's one Ethernet port is being used. The next Ethernet port from the main node, right, is going to connect to D4. The two nodes, uh, the two Ethernet ports are used up in for the first node. So the second node, I'm going to put in the study because it's connected to D4. The first node is connected to, to D4, right? The, uh, the D4 port in the study will be connected to one of the ports in the, uh, in the second mesh node. So take note, one node, uh, one Ethernet port is being used in the second router. The other one port will only cater for one PC in the study because like, obviously there's no more ports, right? Unfortunately, because of the lack of Ethernet ports, um, as we have mentioned, there will only be one Ethernet port for one of the two PCs and none for the devices in the living room because we have no more Ethernet ports left. The workaround will be similar to the previous example where we use a network switch in the study to split the one Ethernet connection to two for the two PCs. So what is going to happen is um, instead of having it in the, the, the router in the study, right? One is connected to D4, the other one is going to connect to the network switch. And then the two PCs will connect uh, via LAN, uh, via Ethernet cables to this network switch. So all of them, the two PCs will have a LAN connection. And then the Wi-Fi connection for the, the main bedroom, the study, and like the, I think that whole area will be covered. That's, uh, that's what I would do for the study. But however, because of the lack of LAN ports, we can't have the same setup for LAN in the living room because the mesh router in the DB box do not have free Ethernet ports left. So the whole setup should be a breeze and it will not, not likely take more than half an hour to set the whole thing up. If you do not have the time to watch the full video and just want a networking plan that suits most people, here's a foolproof way for most households. First, just opt for mesh networking and have a minimum of two nodes. Place one node in each room where you have the most internet activity and in the examples that we've mentioned is the living room and the study. If possible, keep one internet port in each room for future proofing and that should fit most use cases. In the next section, we'll go through some of the devices and solutions that we do not recommend and we'll also discuss our own home network, go through some of the considerations and what equipment we are using.